you, people. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Well, welcome to another edition of the Half Hour Comedy Hour. I'm your host, Mario, Mr. Smooth Man Joyner. I am the original Rico Suave. Thank you very much. Without the hair, of course. Without the hair. I like it here in San Francisco. Very liberal city here. You know, people riding around, hanging out a damn, you know, with the little cable car. Everybody just, uh, just Nobody cares. You can do what you want here. Cops riding around on those, uh, you know, knobby tired motorbikes. Mountain bikes. Cops riding mountain bikes. I just can't handle that, you know. Cop gave me a ticket for uh, jaywalking. Told me I didn't have to pay it. Here, it's up to you, man. Go right ahead. <laughs> Because we understand here, you know, sometimes you have to jaywalk, but I have to give you the ticket. <laughs> Very understanding man, I like that. <laughs> anyway, let's move the show on. This first comedian, extremely funny. She performs regularly at Catch a Rising Star and The Punchline. This is her first time on the Half Hour Comedy Hour. How about a hand for Margaret Cho? Give her a hand. My name is Margaret Cho, and I drive very well. <laughs> so I'm kind of in a goofy mood, you know. I saw my family earlier tonight, had dinner with them. They're very strange, very strange, especially my brother. He's, he's, he's very strange. He's 17 years old, and he used to be a surfer, but now he's a born-again Christian. <laughs> and he's constantly trying to convert me. It's so weird. He comes up to me, and he says, Margaret. <laughs> Margaret. Have you accepted Jesus Christ as your personal savior? Hey, where are you going? <laughs> Bitch. very religious. They actually, they forced me to teach Sunday school for two years. I got fired because I abused my authority. I used to teach class like this. Okay, if one more person talks, everybody is going to hell. I used to keep a list on the board of who was going to burn. things when we taught Sunday school, like um, I used to send money to underprivileged children overseas, and this is like a really good cause, but sometimes I couldn't help but feel emotionally manipulated by some of the literature they'd send us so we'd send them more money. Just outrageous accounts of these poor children. Lu Chen lives in a village where there are 35,000 brothers and sisters. <laughs> they live in a cardboard box. Here she tells a tragic story of the poverty that she must endure every day. Today I went to the market. <laughs> to buy a chicken head. <laughs> but I did not have enough money, so I had to sell my finger. identity problems. For a really long time, I thought that I was Jewish. I actually made all my friends call me Naomi. I'd get angry at my mother about this every day. I'd say, Mom, how could you name me Margaret? Margaret is such a Gentile name. And she'd say, well, how am I supposed to know you're going to be Jewish? crazy. I think you lost your marble. Isn't it incredible when I squint my eyes, I give myself the illusion of being Asian? I had to move out of my parents' house because my mother is full on into Montgomery wards. 
she used to make us go like every weekend. Every Saturday, she would wake us up at like seven, you know, standing in the garage going, kids, kids, let's go to Mumbo Mary War. I think that she would move out too. I also moved out because I realized something very early in life is that you have to do what you want to do in your life right when you want to do it or else you might die without ever having done it. Very scary. Because I was in this really bad accident. I was in a hot air balloon accident. And basically what happened was we hit a freak windstorm and I kind of just fell out of the sky. And it was weird because I was falling and I knew I was going to die but I wasn't scared. I had this intense feeling of peace. Like if I died that would be okay because I spent my whole life chasing after what made me happy. And that is so much better than so many people could say about their lives. Lives. And so I felt really good. And we crashed, and I didn't die. And I thought, you know, I should sue. <laughs> they could have killed me. So, with the money from my settlement, <laughs> I bought these boots. Do you like them? Yeah. Yeah, I do too. I'm going fishing later, so. <laughs> I'm trying to like get together this whole look. My hairdresser's trying to help me, you know, get this look together, but he has really weird ideas about hair. He gave this guy a sideways mohawk, <laughs> which was like really horrible because he already had an Amish beard. <laughs> Can I go ring action going? salon and they did my hair and afterwards they're trying to tell me things that might help me look better and they said hey you should get blue contact lenses <laughs> yeah do you know what I would look like in blue contact lenses I would look like the old blind guy from kung fu <laughs> thanks a lot you guys good night <laughs> Hi, Mario.